Hey, 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 how are you guys doing? How are you guys doing? How are you guys doing? So do you, somebody asked yesterday, okay, let's go straight there. Someone asked yesterday for support in being able to overcome some, um, oh, I'm, switch this off. I can't. I'm just sharing this at the same time I was talking about stuff. Um, someone, yeah, so this person asked on the live stream that I did yesterday about the fact that she it finds it really, really difficult to um, drive. And, oh no, I've just shared it on the page again. Why have I done this? I don't know. <laughs> that was silliness. Anyway, so, so she finds it difficult to drive. Hello, Ramprasad, how are you doing? Lovely to have you here, my love. So she finds it really difficult to drive or something along those lines, okay? I probably should have looked at the, the, the post again from yesterday, but I didn't because it was it's something that I actually have a friend who is similar in that way and I've had friends who have had things like anorexia and various different you know issues like that where they struggle really struggle to overcome their fears around um, around a particular area of life and so either they don't want to eat or they want to eat too much or or there's just you know there's there's just people as well that maybe you want to start a business but you can't start a business because you're petrified of getting going because who knows what might happen and oh my gosh the world might end if i start and i don't want to diminish anyone's fear because we all face fears hey agueda lovely to have you here my honey thank you for saying hello um we all face fears i don't want to diminish anyone's fears but i did say to this this person from yesterday this awesome person from yesterday that i would do a live stream today just talking about overcoming these deep fears is panic attacks that seem to just take over your life and you're not able to then move forward you just can't seem to touch it can just it can't these things can literally take over literally okay and i've, I've seen i see people kind of holding themselves back from living a full life because of these fears again i know some of the stuff that i'm going to say isn't going to necessarily be agreeable to everyone because sometimes we are Sometimes we're enamored with our fears. Even yeah. that, saying that, is going to annoy some people. I know that. I know that. But you know what? We're all human. Can I? I'm just going to be very blunt and clear about this stuff because I want you to win. I want you to overcome. I want you to be free. I don't want you to live in in fear forever. No, we're not born to live in fear. We're not born to live in fear. I really just don't believe that we're born to live in fear. I do believe that we can overcome these things. No doubt in my mind, I believe it with everything inside of me that we can overcome fear. We don't have to live afraid of getting into some kind of panic attack or something, something, something. We don't need to live that way. We are divine beings. We have unlimited, we have limitless power. We can rise above, <laughs> basically, but we have to be willing to. Anyway, we're going to start by singing the affirmation today, which is, I delight myself in the Lord, and He gives me the desires of my heart. I'm free, fulfilled, abundant love. I'd love you to join in. Whichever way, I'd love you to just be at peace. Come to a quiet place here, because we're going to be talking about some deep stuff here. And I wanted to serve you. I wanted to serve you, okay? So share this with somebody else, because some other people might need to hear it whilst we're here, and ask any questions that you have whilst we're here. Because I want to, I want this to serve you, okay? I want this to serve you. So we're going to start by singing this affirmation. And I do want you to go into that quiet place within yourself. And really connect with the divine. Connect with source. Whatever you call it, okay? We all, in this community, we all know that there's something more. There's something bigger than just us. So therefore, connect with whatever that thing is for you, okay? And when I say delight myself in the Lord, that is what I mean. You're delighting yourself in whatever you feel is that limitless power that is more than you, but that you are one with, okay? Okay, so here we go. I delight myself in the Lord, and He gives me the desires of my heart. I delight myself in the Lord, and He gives me the desires I am free, fulfilled, abundant love. 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 And again, I delight myself 
But to start with, because I'm going to take you through seven steps. Some of them are repetitive. But the seven steps to overcome these anxieties, to overcome these fears that might take you over. Number one, number one, how do you want life to look? Like my family. No, it's not. How do you want life to look? Okay? Because sometimes we get so trapped in the way life is. Now, something, the chances are, chances are for everyone that goes through anxiety attacks, that goes through um, panic attacks, that goes through, I can't drive because of this, I can't go outside because of that, I can't do that. There is something triggered it at some point. We are aware of that. But right now, what I don't want you to do is spend lots of time thinking about all of that because it hasn't helped you so far, <laughs> okay? It hasn't helped you so far. It's not likely to start helping you to focus in on oh my gosh this is a problem and this is why it's so and, blah, blah, blah. and there is room for clearing and we'll talk about that soon but to start with how do you want life to be okay because sometimes we lose sight of that in the midst of all the craziness of facing and dealing with the fear right now you lose track of the fact that life doesn't have to be that way how would you like life to be so get your journals out and you start to write down if I didn't have this, if, the, if, I, if I knew completely, truly inside of me that I was completely safe and all of that stuff, how would I, um, what would I like my life to be like? What would I, what do I really want? And I suppose the obvious answer will be that I would want to be free of all this thing, but we don't even want to think about it, your life in connection with the fear or with the panic attack or with, with that. What we want to think about is what do you, imagine it didn't even exist at all in your existence. What do you want then life to look like for you? That is what I want you to focus on, okay? Not coming from a place of thinking, oh my gosh, this is my life. And, and so, uh, so yes, I want the opposite of it. No, no, no. I want you to really, truly see it as though it's not even happening to you, okay? It's not even happening. It never happened. How would you like life to look like? I want you to get very clear on that, okay? Again, most people don't do this. They're really focused on the immediate oh my gosh this is my life right now it doesn't have to be your life forever though i really need you to know that so you need to first and foremost how do i want my life to look like let's get some clear intentions for going through this process right so number one what do you want what do you really truly desire from your life okay number two connect connect to source you know, we're singing this affirmation, delight myself in the divine, delight myself in source, delight myself in whatever he gives me the desires of my heart. And it's absolutely the truth, okay? When you realize that this body of yours is not all there is, when you realize that your spirit, your soul, actually, yeah, it has made a home within this physical form, but that's not all you are you and you connect with all that is for some of us some of you may have been brought up particular religion so you may have ways of seeing the divine i want you to really tap into that because for a lot of you 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 have these ideas on what the divine is like and you sing about it at your religious organizations you you take part in these things where and you if someone asks you the question oh you're so sure it's like a lot of my friends that's the case we, we're all most of us are christian and you know they would say oh yes he does this and he's amazing and no 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 but it doesn't actually seem to make a difference to everyday life and that needs to change that needs to change so first and foremost you are 
you're looking at, so yeah, first of all, you decide what you want. Then your second thing is that you're connecting to source. Who is source to you? You're really getting a true idea of that. And you're connecting, you quiet yourself down. You connect with source, however it works for you. Maybe you like meditation, maybe you like journaling. I teach a four step process to do this, but you're connecting to source completely. And in that connection, in that connection, you realize that you're one with this source. So you're one with this limitless power. And more than anything, you are loved, completely loved, completely safe, completely supported. That is actually the feeling you want to get to, that feeling of being surrounded, overwhelmed, covered by love. You want to get to that feeling. When you've got to that feeling, you want to take that feeling into your everyday life. Because the next thing you're going to have to do, number three, is that you're going to have to stretch out of your comfort zone. And this may seem like, oh, no, 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 I can't do that. I'm going to wait until I feel just loving, loved enough or whatever. The truth of the matter is that until you start spreading your wings that little bit, nothing changes. Nothing changes until you start spreading your wings and deciding that you're going to. It's okay, for instance, I can't drive thing because of whatever, whatever happened, okay? And it, it causes me to panic. I get that, okay? Now, we don't want to put you in a place of unsafety, but you need to stretch a little bit. You need to stretch a little bit. So you're gonna to have to take an action. You're going to have to, because even in the, sometimes people, you know, you get these panic attacks or you get this anxiety, this anxious feeling in your chest, and you tell yourself that it's a sign that you need to rest and relax. I see people, you know, holding back, telling themselves that, oh no, the last time I tried that, I, um, you know, I had burnout and oh my gosh, I can't, you know, I, I need to be careful. But actually, no, that's a lie. That's fear telling you that you that the only way to handle me as in fear is to sit back take just just rest relax wait for me to pass and then you can move forward it's never the truth never the truth you sitting back continues to reinforce the fear continues to reinforce the fear so you have to go through you have to go through you have to look that panic in the eye and say i'm coming through now, does that mean you're suddenly going to jump onto the highway or the motorway and drive 180 miles? Probably not. Maybe one mile, maybe half a mile. You're going to do something that stretches you out a little bit, the panic to start to rise. And at that moment, I actually want you to find the courage to look into the face of it. If there's anything to be cleared, it's in that moment, not your old stories of, what caused it, what triggered it, what, whatever, whatever. It's actually now your recent story of what is triggering it right now. That's what we want to clear and heal. Not the old, yeah, maybe we'll get to that finally. But again, I know the chances are that you've been trying to sort that out for a long time. And that hasn't worked so far. So you're pushing yourself a little bit out of your comfort zone, just a little bit, honey, just a little tiny, teeny, teeny, wincy bit out of your comfort zone, you're doing the thing, just a little bit. Remembering that you're loved, you're safe, you're fully supported, holding on to that feeling through it all. And as you feel the panic start to rise, as you feel the fear start to rise inside of you, you're looking for what is it that I need to heal right now? And maybe you'll pack up, maybe you'll stop at that point and that's fine. Because you're not trying to, you know, scare yourself silly here. You're just, <laughs> you are trying to gradually expand your ability to move. But now you want to do the healing work. Because you now you see, you start to see the story that you're telling yourself. You start to understand what is holding you back. So in that, in that moment, you start to um, look at the thing. Maybe you make a note. I'm very much for making notes on these things. You're asking higher power, you know, what is it? So this thing has popped up in my mind right now. How do I heal it, one? I like to use things like Ho'oponopono. I like to use sometimes it's forgiveness because it might be that somebody, somebody, something did something, someone, somewhere, basically. There's all kinds of different ways that you can heal. 
But the truth is, you can trust yourself to know, because again, you're connected with the divine. You can know, you can work with a coach to help you do that. So yeah, I definitely do things like this with clients in Rise. I help them, um, and also in the Opulent Circle actually, I help them clear this stuff. It's part of the deliberate life method that you're clearing anything that gets in your way. But you know, a simple open up one is something you can Google and go and find out more about it. But you're clearing it. Some of you might be at a church or whatever where they offer healing services. Cool, you can do that. I know there was, um, I learned to do, oh, what is it called now? Uh, restoring, no, not restoring the foundations. I did restoring the foundations, uh, which was pretty, pretty dang amazing. But there's also another one, which I can't remember what it's called. But it's all these, all these like healing methodologies that help you to heal. Once you've actually started to stretch a little bit, and you see what comes up. I feel that's the easiest way to deal with what you need to deal with. So the next time you take action, which is going to be your next step, my honey, you can go a little bit further. So maybe you drove half a mile. Maybe the next time around, you can drive a mile. And again, you're looking to see what are the fears that are coming up inside of me? What is happening? Yeah, now the panic may be so strong that you find it almost impossible to, to think. So you stop at that point. You connect to the divine again. I'm loved. I'm safe. I'm fully supported. So I delight myself in the Lord. He gives me the desires of my heart. I am free. I am fulfilled. I am abundant. I am love. I am loved. I am love. I'm loving forever. Oh, I'm lovable forever. You know, I, you say these things to yourself to calm yourself down again. But remember, we have to go through, right? We have to go through. There is no sitting on the bench somewhere hoping that somehow the fear will go away by itself. It doesn't, it doesn't go away by itself. It never does, you've tried. I've said this many, many times. You've tried, it doesn't go away. You have to do the clearing, you have to do the healing, you have to keep repeating, pushing yourself a little bit outside of your comfort zone. And I, I can tell you this right now, even as I'm saying this, sometimes people, and I know that when it feels so intense to you, it can almost feel like you're the only one that ever goes through this stuff. But it's like even doing things like this, and it, it may seem, that I, okay, I come here, I'm so confident, I'm so brave, I'm so whatever, I do this stuff. But each time I too have to, you know, push myself out over and over and over again. Because there are a heck of a lot of people who want to do something like this, who want to be messengers of life, who will never allow themselves to do so because of fear. And because they're telling themselves, well, the fear must, be mean, must mean that I need to sit down and wait until I'm more prepared, I'm more ready, I'm more this, I'm more the other, instead of just moving forward. And so... As much as your, your attack, your panic, your inability to handle it or right now may seem like, oh my gosh, you don't get it, Rosemary. You don't understand how hard this is for me. It's relative, okay? I do not in any way diminish anyone's pain. Please let me say that again. But I want you to be free, though. And you are more powerful than you give yourself credit for. And until you start to step into that power, you won't know it, really. You have to step into that power. And I know it will be hard. I know it will feel like I cannot do this. You don't understand, Rosemary. It's, it's just like it overwhelms me. I get it. I get it. I get it. But I want you to be free. And you're only going to be free by, by partnering the mental work with the action, the physical work. So this action, but in two, two parts here, you're connecting with the divine, you're choosing to feel loved, safe, and fully supported, and it's a choice. You're choosing to trust that nothing will harm you. You're choosing to trust that you're powerful enough to stretch a little bit, and then you stretch a little bit. You notice the thoughts that come up. You heal them. Maybe, I know you hold point of point of it. I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you. Maybe you need to do some forgiveness work. Maybe you need to do restoring foundation. Maybe you need to do whatever in order to heal. And you change those beliefs that are holding you bound in a life that you don't want anymore. Okay? You connect again to divine. This needs to be a regular part of your life that you're connecting, 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 because that is how you feel completely loved, how you feel and you know that you're more than all of this. You're more than all of this, okay? Because um, ultimately, we have to retrain this God unit. You ultimately, and this is it, we take full responsibility for this. You ultimately trained yourself to be afraid. And I know that might seem, seem harsh. But you did train yourself to be afraid. We've all done it in some big or small fashion. We trained ourselves to believe the lie 
that we're small and insignificant and, and we need to be scared and we need to panic when things that are outside of our control seem to come at us, when actually it's never been the truth and it still isn't the truth and it'll never be the truth. You are more powerful than that, okay? Always more powerful than that. What else? You refuse to allow your, your mind to remain in fear, which is what I'm saying. You have to retrain your brain. You have to do it over and over and over again. You may have to do it a million times. You may have to do it a million times a day to begin with, and then the next day you can do it 999,999 times, and the day after that, maybe you do 999,995 times. <laughs> and, and, and that's because and I say that because sometimes people think, no, 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 if you knew how, how hard it is for me, then you wouldn't be saying that. I, honey, I'm not saying that this is easy work. I'm saying it's possible work. Do you want to be free? If you want to be free, you can be free. You are more powerful than fear. You don't have to stay in fear. You don't, you really don't, okay? And what else? You stay connected, really? So my seven steps, most of them would say, <laughs> which is that you get clear on what you want life to look like. So you're keeping the intention very, very clear in your mind, very, very clear in your mind. You know what it is that you're working towards. You know what it is that you're working towards. You know it, okay? You connect with source. You know that you're loved, you're safe, you're fully supported. You take action, you take some kind of action. You refuse to stay stuck. Even if it's the teeniest, tiniest action, you take action. You notice what thoughts come up. You notice when the panic kicks in. You start again to clear, to heal, to decide, okay, okay, I need to change beliefs around this. I'm believing a story here that is not helping me anymore. I need to change that. You might just, even if it's driving, you park by the side of the road until it all comes down a little bit. But you, can't, you cannot wait forever because if you keep waiting, thinking that one day it will be better, it's not true. It won't be better you'll go through a heck of a lot of pain and then maybe, but you could have just avoided a lot of the pain if you just decided, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to take deliberate action to design my life. So you heal the pain, you connect again. If you've kind of lost that connection, you take action again, you connect again, <laughs> you stay connected, you stay connected, you stay connected to source, you stay connected knowing that your power is beyond just this body and you keep retraining that mind. Sorry, there was another part. Yeah, I refuse to allow your mind to remain in fear. Even if you have to change your mind a million times a day, you do it. Because the more you do it, the quicker it will be for you to change your mind. You keep delighting yourself in the divine. I know these things are simple. Well, kind of simple to say. They're not so simple to do. In some ways, it might even seem easier to keep looking for another solution, keep looking for the next thing, keep looking for the next blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't solve the problem. It doesn't, it doesn't, you just find it more and more information, but until you actually find the courage to keep expanding a little bit at a time, a little bit, it could be the teeniest, tiniest little bit at a time. By partnering the mental action with the physical action and you win. That is how you win. You're not born to live in fear. You are more powerful than that. You are loved. You are safe. You are fully supported. And you can heal. You can heal. But yes, it will, it will be scary to begin with. I'm not going to lie. But you can get over it. And you keep your eyes on the end. You keep your eyes on the end. Or at the very least, you keep your eyes on the divine instead of the difficulty or the issue or the, the fear. You keep your eyes on the divine and you, you focus on where you're going and you keep moving forward. Simple to say, I know it's not simple to do, but it's not impossible to do. If you want freedom, that's a pathway to freedom. I would say that's the pathway to freedom. It's, you know, this is a deliberate life method, you know? You're connecting to source. You're getting clear on your, your vision, what you want from your life. You're clearing any obstacles in your path. And you're creating by taking aligned action. Four simple keys that if you will do, freedom, fulfillment, abundance, love, yours, will be yours absolutely yours because they're already yours okay they're already yours it's just that you have to get to that place of stepping into them so that is it honey that is it that is it will you do it though will you do it that is the question so 
um, yeah, I want to invite you, for some of you, having that extra support will help you. And there's two ways that you can get that. In fact, yeah, and so I'll put the link to this, to the prosperous life here. Well, there's probably more than two ways, but you know what, I'm going to tell you about two ways. One is to join me in the opulence circle. It's not as one-to-one -one as RISE, which is the second way. But the opulence circle is a great start to help you. And you know, most people come into the circle and within days of being a member of the circle, they can already see changes in their lives. So I invite you to come into the opulence circle. That's one way. The second way is RISE, to work with me one-on-one -on -one for an intensive period of time. So it's like three hours, four hours. We are together over the phone or, or um, in person, if you're anywhere near where I am at any given time. And we will go through this together, okay? And help you to rise above this stuff. Because you are born to live in freedom. And I frankly see a world where we, the spirit-driven, are free, fulfilled, abundant love we're making a difference on the planet because we're free of our fears free of all the stuff that keeps us bound up and it will be in connection in clarity in action a deliberate life that is how you will create it okay so i'm going to bring this to a close by singing the affirmation <laughs> here we go i delight myself in the lord and he gives me the desires of my heart. I delight myself in the Lord. And he gives me the desires of my heart. I am free, fulfilled, abundant love. I am free, fulfilled, abundant love. I am free, fulfilled. Okay, and there you have it, my honeys. So, to find out more about Rise, all you need to do is send me through a message and ask about Rise, and then I'll tell you about it. Otherwise, other ways to work with me to help you out with this stuff is Prosperous Life. Do you need to work with anyone? You don't have to. You can do this stuff on your own, man. <laughs> Because you are a divine being, honey. You know, you, you can. It just speeds things up sometimes to have help. But that's up to you. But you know what? Ultimately, if you would listen to this and actually start taking those steps, life will change for you. Okay, guys, it's been a pleasure. Until the next time. Much amazing. Love. Bye. Share this with someone else, okay? <laughs> Bye.